What are my first impressions of playing 8th edition? Time to answer this one and more in today's Q&A. Next speaking, and welcome to this video. My time for another q and I've got some great questions here to answer. Uh, can't wait to get to answering them. Uh, if you would like to ask me a question, then please leave a question in the comments box below. would really appreciate that uh, for the next episode. Right, before we answer these questions, if you would like to keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40K, then please give me a sub and hit the bell button so you don't miss an upload. Okay, so I've got all the questions here ready uh, from the last Q&A video that I did about a month ago. Uh, can't wait to get answering those. Before that, though, a little question for you guys, so you can either answer in the comments or on one of your Q&A videos. Um, and I have a question about 8th edition, uh, in particular about who goes first. So what do you think uh, about the current rule set about who finishes deploying first goes first? Uh, do you think that's a good idea? Is it working well for you? Do you prefer the ITC way of doing things where they do a roll off, but the person who deploys first gets plus one to the dice roll? Very interested to hear your thoughts. So that is my question for this month's video. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the questions that I've got to answer. Okay, so the first question is from Inquisitor Jones, and he says, uh, don't think I've seen you play Aeos. Uh, do you play, and if so, what army? If not, what army would you play? Uh, so, great little question. Um, I don't play Aeos, although I have played a game of it. Uh, so I played against Ace Face. Um, I did have a battle report up, I think a couple of months ago. Uh, and I played his Corn Demons, because uh, he brought both of his armies down, and he played his Skaven. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a good introduction to 8th edition, I thought, uh, with a lot of the rule sets. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, and yes, I did beat Ace with his own army. Sorry, Ace. Um, <laughs> so he says, what, uh, if so, what army? So, okay, I don't play, but as you know, I'm doing my Slanesh themed army. So I'm, I am gonna hopefully get uh, the demon side of that army into an Aeos format um, army, potentially. So if, for example, Ace comes down a game and play Aeos, at least I've got an army to play. Um, if not, what army would you play? So, I'm doing the, the demons, as I said, purely because of my Empress Children army, but putting that aside, what army would I play? Um, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for uh, lizard men. I'm sure they've got some new name now, but yeah, lizard men, they, they really, I like them. I think it's the blue skin, I think they look really cool. Um, so yeah, lizard men, or whatever their new name is. So thank you for the question. Uh, next question is from Basic Miniature Painting, and he says, uh, one question is, how did you keep positive uh, when you had just started your YouTube channel? This is a very good question. Um, so just thinking back now, it was a long time ago. So I stayed positive because I was only uploading a video about every week um, when I first started, um, and uh, I just enjoyed it basically. I enjoyed, I, I started off basically doing uh, battle reports um, and I was editing the battle reports with uh, music and words over the top, which I did really enjoy, but they took a long time to edit. I remember those those battle reports taking like eight hours to edit. I was totally new to editing um, and you know, the whole thing. Uh, but I enjoyed it and I think that's what, um, that's what, kept me positive um, about YouTube really, the fact that I enjoyed making the videos. Um, and then I gradually made more videos, then I diversed out into showing off some of my armies. Um, and then I started talking on the camera and um, just went from there really. So I just stayed positive. I'm, and the most positive thing for me was when you, you get a comment on your video, you know, that, that comment that comes through, even if it's just a basic comment like, you know, that, that was good, or I don't know, models look nice or something. That's quite um, inspiring, that keeps you G'd on to keep doing it. That's why I always like to like comment on other videos as well, it's just because I know, I know how important that is to have that comment. Um, it really makes you feel good inside, it makes you want to do more. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. 
Next question is from the 40k Orcs, um, and he says, so here's a question. There are rumours that Prince had a vault full of unreleased work uh, when he died. If true, would you give up 40k and any hobby work at all forever to gain access to it? It's a very good question. Um, I've got a quick answer, it's no, and there is a reason for that. So I've always known that Prince has this vault, um, which um, I was always told, or always read, or always knew. You never really know with Prince what's true and what's rumour, um, but I was always told that this vault that he's got, um, had, he had it in his will, that the vault was to be opened 100 years after his death. Um, and then the material used to produce one album every year until the material had finished. Um, and when I when I read this particular article, he had 400 tracks in the vault, um, which apparently was always added to anyway, so I'd imagine there's a lot more. Um, and in my mind, back then, I mean, this was back in probably the early 90s, um, that's that stuck with me, so I always knew that I would never listen, never hear any of his music from the vault. Um, you know, that was something for the future, that was destined for something else. So I got used to the idea of that, um, and um, that is why I wouldn't give anything up to listen to that music, because I accepted many, many years ago that I would never hear that music. So yeah, that's my answer to that question. So the next question is from T7044, and he says, any chance you can do a showcase video for your armies? I'm looking for some ideals to still adapt uh, to do my own force. Um, so the answer is yes, um, but it's getting the time, uh, because it takes a long time to do an army showcase. Uh, it takes hours to set the table up and get all your models out, and then it takes hours to pack them all back again. Uh, plus, making the video, which takes about 10 minutes, um, is a lot of work. Now, I have done a showcase of my Tyranid army when I was up to 7,000 points. I have added to that, um, but not that many units. So the Tyranid one's sort of done. Uh, the Necron one I did a long time ago when I first started the channel, and it has had a reasonable amount of units um, added to it. So I definitely really, really need to do the Necron one. Uh, there is an Aldar one on the on the on the channel as well. So I have sort of done them, but they've been sort of work in progress ones. Well, all armies are work in progress, aren't they? So um, I will be doing updated army showcase videos, uh, but I've got to get some time to do them. So uh, one for the future, maybe towards the end of the year, I will try and get some done. Thank you for the question. Right, the next one is from uh, Freak, from uh, Frost and Fists, and he says, uh, So, my favourite Star Trek series is definitely Next Generation, though I grew up watching the original series with Kirk. Um, I'm a closet Star Trek nut and played Star Trek Online MMO for years. Question, which episodes of Generations was your favourite and why? Awesome video, bud. Thank you, Freak. Thanks for watching. I know you're very, very busy at the moment with work, etc. So I appreciate you watching. Um, okay, so I, I have actually had this question before. And I went for uh, the first time that the Generation team uh, uh, saw the Borg, basically. I can't remember what the episode's called now. I'm not that very good at remembering episodes. Uh, but yeah, it was the one when uh, they met the Borg the first time, because that was the very last episode um, that I watched with my dad. Um, actually, it was the last thing he watched before he went into hospital and sadly never came out again. So I have fond memories of that episode. Um, other episodes that I really like is uh, Yesterday's Enterprise, which I believe is like the fans' favorite episode anyway. Um, and also like, uh, I think it's called Data's Day, uh, where he gets into the relationships, quite a comical one. Uh, that was a cool episode, but yeah, um, I still stick with that Borg episode. The first time uh, Picard and the crew met the Borg. Pretty awesome. Thank you for the question, Freak. All right, next one is from Mini Warrior. He says, great video as always. Uh, if you could choose only one Eldar Aspect Warrior to be made into a stunning plastic kit, who would you choose? 
Um, that's a really good question, actually. Interesting one from my point of view. Um, I've always, well, I th the answer is that warp spiders, warp spiders are the most desperate and long-awaited redo. Uh, those models are so old. Uh, they're all the same pose and they fall over all the time. So we need new warp spiders. Uh, but from my personal point of view, I've got 15 warp spiders. I've got swooping hawks. I've got fire dragons. They're painted. Um, I've got dark reapers, which need painting. Um, I've got howling banshees, which need painting. And I've got harlequins, which need painting. I've got all the aspect warriors. I don't need a new model for me to buy because I've got them all anyway. So actually, I don't think it would make that much difference if they did bring out a brand new stunning kit. Um, but if I would like to see one, I think I would say Warp Spiders because I think they're the most overdue. That model is arguably one of the oldest sculpts that we've got in the game, I would imagine. They're pretty old. Um, so yeah, that's my answer, Warp Spiders. Next question is from Comic Book Joe from Green Stuff Games, and she says, uh, "Do you play any independent games, non-games workshop ones? Uh, and if so, what do you play?" Uh, so I play uh, Star Trek Attack Wing, which um, we play as a little stopgap game. So, you know, sometimes we won't feel like playing 40k, setting up the terrain, etc. Or maybe we've got some other friends that want to join in our gaming night, um, and they're not into 40k. Um, so we just get a few Star Trek ships out and just play Attack Wing. Uh, it is a fun game. Really enjoy it. Um, I I I guess into I get into the game sort of from a, a visual side. You know, I always imagine the episodes etc. As I'm playing the game, um, you know. But it's good fun. Uh, it's quite interesting actually because my buddy, Blood Angels player, um, he's into it quite a lot. He's probably into it more than me from the point of view of. Um, making good lists. He likes to get a lot of cheese onto his ships. Whereas I just take what's maybe more cinematic of, of what I imagine from the episode, because he's not actually really a Star Trek fan. I got him into the game, um, but he's got more sort of um, uh, competitive, let's say, on his builds. And I've got a bit more fluffy in, in terms of what I take the war gear. It's like, well, you can't have Riker on that ship, you know, that's not right, etc. You know, that, uh, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, Attack Wing, that is my other game that I like to play that's not Games Workshop. Uh, next question is from Mike from Crew Orange Angelus. And he says, nice Q&A. That's an impressive break. Thank you, Mike. I was talking about my snooker break, which was 83, my highest break so far. So far, I hope to beat it one day. Um, do you participate in any other sports or games? So... Um, apart from 40k and attack wing, not really. Um, I do get roped into playing my daughter's game sometimes, like My Little Pony, etc. Um, but they don't really count today. So, no, sports, I'm not a sporty person at all. Um, so, yeah, that's my answer. Thank you for your question, Mike. Uh, next, we have one from Victor Quest. And he says... After playing some 8th edition 40k, what are your first impressions about the game? Um, thank you, Victor, for the question. So, yeah, I have played a um, reasonable amount of 40k now. I say reasonable amount, probably compared to some people it isn't. I think I've played five games uh, so far. Uh, so my first impressions are that first turn seems to be quite important. Uh, and... The old, I think the main difference that I can see is the old turn one and two, like, okay, I'm just going to like reposition my army, um, and then you're going to reposition your army, we're going to try and shoot a bit here and there, and then sort of turn two, the onslaught tends to start to happen. Well, that's gone now, it's like turn one, onslaught, um, or turn one, how do I prevent the onslaught if you're going second? Uh, so it's, it's very full on, um, it seems. And um, from what I can tell, it's like turn one, two, and three are the most important, and the game's pretty much over by turn three. Whereas before it used to be turn one and two, and the game really didn't start till turn three. Uh, unless you're playing, obviously, I mean, obviously, some lists like Tower Riptides, 
you know that was over before even turn one started um, but yeah definitely I would say a bit quicker uh, in terms of sort of uh, the onslaught not necessarily game length although they are they do tend to be a bit quicker um, but obviously there's still a lot of rule rules sort of looking up and referring to data sleets for stats and stuff um, you know especially like for example with tanks you know when you get down to half strength you've got to relook at the stats and stuff uh, but we'll get used to that and once we are used to that I think it will speed up even more uh, so yeah that's my answer thank you so the next question is from DZ Sabre and he says uh, when you start building a new army what makes you decide to include conversions within the new army? Uh, so that's a great question. I know you love your conversion so let's talk about conversions. Um, so what makes me decide about doing conversions is generally if I need more than one of the same unit. So I always like to have uh, an original unit in my army. So, for example, with the Demonettes, um, I'm going to have one unit exactly as is out of the box. Um, and then if I have a second unit, I'm probably going to add the conversions to the second unit to make them different. Um, I don't, I just don't go all out. So I'm going to make an army and I'm going to convert everything. Um, because I think the, the models themselves from GW, whoever, um, are generally actually very good and there's no real need to convert them. Okay, some of them aren't so good and they could benefit from a conversion. Um, but I don't go all out thinking I am going to convert the models. I add a conversion if I think it's necessary or if I just want to change things up from maybe a unit that I've already done. Um, and that's what I did, for example, on my Brood Lord. So I've made one Brood Lord exactly as is out of the box. And the second Brood Lord, I sort of really converted it up to try and make it look different. Uh, so that's what would implement uh, conversions into my army, uh, just to make the models look different, really. So the next question is from Battle Knights and he said uh, considering how involved you are with the community and having a job and a family where do you get the time to watch all the YouTube content? Uh, so basically I have my computer running all the time <laughs> uh, apart from when I'm making videos and editing the videos um, I've usually got the, the computer on with YouTube videos going so I am uh, quite lucky at work I can have the computer on almost like a radio so it's there on and then I can just comment and stuff at work um, and then in the mornings you know before I go to work I have the laptop on when I get home I generally have the laptop on um, unless the wife wants me to do something else so yeah uh, that's how I do it basically basically I don't watch telly I just watch YouTube okay thank you for the question so we're on the last page now, I've got three questions left. Uh, the first one is from Mythos from Frost and Fists. Without asking for any spoilers, who are some of your favourite characters in Game of Thrones? I always thought Ned Stark would have been an epic space wolf and Daenerys is just super sexy. Take care my friend. Thank you Mythos, a good question and uh, this question came on the back of me saying that my current favourite series to watch is Game of Thrones. Um, now first of all, I have to say, um, I love Game of Thrones, I love watching it, um, but I do find it quite confusing, I have to be honest. Now I have a work colleague who's into Game of Thrones, Thrones a lot more than me, who reads all the books and he's always reading enough all this information to me. Uh, I do find it a bit confusing but I do enjoy watching it at the same time and uh, names of characters and stuff, I always find tough remembering stuff like that. Um, but you are correct, Daenerys, Khaleesi, the Dragon Queen, she's hot. Um, Favourite character, so I do like her whenever her scene's on, I uh, pay a lot of attention to. Um, I don't tend to get too involved with the characters because they, you know, they usually die, so I try to avoid getting too involved with them. Um, it's still hard guessing over Ned Stark dying. Uh, Jon Snow. That's got to be one of the main characters that I, I like watching. Um, yeah, I just like it all, really. I think it's just all, it's all pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mythos. And uh, next is from Jeff A.H. Tabletop. Um, actually, it's another Games of Thrones question. So, he said, what is your favourite Games of Thrones house sigil? Um, 
Yeah, like I said, I'm not really great on the names and the, and the, the story. I love the story, but I'm not that great on it. So I'm just going to say the Dragon Queen, whatever Sigul thing she's from. I like her. She's my favourite. And the last question is from Jamjar34. And he says, uh, do you plan with your Space Wolves and your Chaos Army to do some vehicles? Uh, which ones if you are? Uh, great question. Thank you, Jam. Uh, so I do actually have some vehicles in my Space Wolves. I've got three Rhino straight Razorbacks because they're magnetised. Um, and then I've got one Chaos one as well, which is one I just bought second hand somewhere. And I think it's actually a Thousand Suns one. Um, it's not painted or anything. None of those are painted. Uh, now the reason why I've got those is not because of the fluff or anything, because obviously the fluff of the 13th company, they're not allowed any vehicles. Um, but when Games Workshop got rid of the Eye of Terror Codex and they produced the normal Codex, uh, I had no choice but to play my army really with tanks. Uh, so I went out and I got some tanks and I thought, okay, they've got rid of 13th company fluff, I'll just play them as normal Space Wolves now. Uh, so I got myself some tanks. Since I've been painting them and now we've got the Curse of the Wolven out, um, well, 8th edition obviously has, has changed all that, but basically now we've got the Wolven models out and we've got Thunderwolf Cavalry, I think I can make my army fluffy again. So I probably am not going to do the vehicles uh, for now, anyway, for the 13th company. I want to finish everything that I originally had for the army first. And then I'm going to invest in Thunderwolf Cavalry and once I've done that, I probably will paint the vehicles just like an extra on the end of the army. Um, and of course, having Empress Children as my Chaos Army and then my 13th company are wearing Empress Children armour, which it wasn't a major influence, but it had a small percentage of influence. The fact that I went for Empress Children because my Space Wolves have Empress Children um, armour. Uh, was mainly because A, I enjoyed painting the pink, that was good fun, uh, but B, maybe I could interchange some of the stuff. Um, so yeah, my Empress Children tanks that I'm going to have, which are probably going to be um, a Predator, I'd imagine, a uh, Rhino, you know, that type of, of tank, maybe a Land Raider. Never done a Land Raider before in my life, so maybe a Land Raider for the Empress Children. Then I can use those in my 13th Company Army, um, and it would still sort of work because obviously the 13th company are supposed to have looted um, all of the chaos stuff. So uh, I've got a nice mix and match there which could be useful. But more to come on that in the future as I work through uh, my Space Wolves and my Slanesh army. Okay, so that is it for all the questions. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, commenting. Uh, don't forget, if you want more questions answered in the next video, uh, then I will need more questions. So please pop them down below. Any questions you would like to ask me, hobby related or non-hobby related, uh, put them into the comments box. Beam me up.